so I have just finished watching the new Downton Abbey film. Downton Abbey is one of my absolute favourite things. It always makes me feel happy when I'm a little bit down or I need a little bit of a boost. I've been really looking forward to seeing this film for the longest time and I can tell you that it definitely lives up to its expectations. It's such a gorgeous film, filmed a lot in the south of France, absolutely beautiful scenery, costumes, you'll definitely love it so I would definitely implore you to go and see it. I'm feeling so inspired after watching the film and I know that there is a Downton Abbey cookbook so I'm going to nip to my local bookstore which is just next door and buy that and then I want to bake some of the recipes from the Downton Abbey film. So let's do it. So I'm home now and I've just been looking through the Downton Abbey cookbook for inspiration. It is a really gorgeous book and it has a lot of different recipes in here. So I'll just have a look quick, take you through some of these. So it goes through breakfast and actually it's organized in sections for upstairs and downstairs. So the upstairs recipes are a little bit more fancy and the downstairs recipes are very simple ones, which is quite nice because you get the best of both. If you wanted to have a really elegant dinner party, you could use the upstairs recipes and then the downstairs recipes are more suitable for everyday dining. So it goes in different sections. We have breakfasts and there are some really delicious ones in there like truffled eggs, English muffins. And then we got lunch and supper and which is mostly salads and fish recipes. And then there are some traditional English things like Cornish pasties. Um, and then there was, an, there was an Italian way of cooking spinach, which sounds really delicious. Then we get to the section that I'm most interested in, afternoon tea and garden parties. And these are very traditional British uh, afternoon tea recipes that you would find probably in the Edwardian era. What I've realized about these is that they're often very heavy and made with things that I don't really like to cook with, like gelatin. But that is the beauty of what we're going to do. We can eliminate those things and adapt them to what we actually want. The recipe that I really like the sound of that I've never made before is an orange layer cake. And that is this here. It looks delicious. Orange and lemon, as you know, are one of my favorite things to cook and bake with. And I think that will be a really fresh dessert for afternoon tea, something that I've never done before. And it's kind of like a Victoria sponge base, um, but this one is obviously a little bit more zesty and will be a little bit more interesting than the plain Victoria sponge. So I think I'm going to make that one. And then there are a few sandwich recipes also for tea sandwiches. They've got the obvious cucumber sandwich that we've made a lot of times here on this channel. I am going to make that one again because it's my favorite one and everybody enjoys it. But then there are some new ones that I've never tried. So we're going to go through and make those as well. So this should be a very nice Downton Abbey inspired afternoon tea. Um, definitely worth getting the cookbook for. I would highly recommend it. So let's bake some of these recipes and have a really delicious Downton Abbey afternoon tea. So I just wanted to share with you the latest addition to the Botanica range. So you probably have seen my Botanica scented candle, which has been out for quite a few months. And the dis scented diffuser was something that I always wanted to have. The thing that I love about diffusers is that the scent is carried throughout the home all the time. So you don't have to light the candle. But even though people do often say that they can smell the candle when it's not lit, which is a real compliment because I wanted it to have a really good throw and for it to be highly fragrant. So the fact that it does that, and it really does, is a great thing. But yeah, diffusers are just an excellent way to have scent in the home constantly. And one of the wonderful things about this is that when you walk through the door after a busy or a stressful day, you're greeted with the scent of an English garden 
what could be nicer than that? So yeah, this is something that I wanted for a long, long time. We worked very hard to get this just right. It's been in my home for the past few weeks, so I've trialed and tested it for you, and I can say that it definitely does bring a beautiful scent to the home. So I'm very happy with that. Also, even I would buy it just for the box because we worked very hard on this beautiful packaging. I think this is a real work of art. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's bright and fresh and like the other Botanica candle, it has the flower here and the little bees and insects, which I think is so cute. It really does um, emulate the best of an English garden. So yes, this is the new diffuser. Uh, I'm really excited about it. And I'll just read the back of the box here. This is the perfect description of what I think this candle brings to the home. It says, the Earl Grey tea is poured into the cup and the scent of an English rose is carried through the air by a gentle breeze. The bees bumble from bloom to bloom, delicately savouring each bud. So yes, that is the new scented diffuser. If you would like to learn more, you can go to nicholasfairford.com. It is now available on the website. But I do have to say, it is only available in the US and the UK for the time being. Um, this is a very delicate product and we want to make sure that it arrives in one piece so that um, you don't get disappointed. But once we've figured that out and we realize that it works, we'll be able to open the shipping up worldwide again. So check it out. Okay, so let's get started baking this orange layer cake. And as with most things that I bake, this is something I've never done before. So this process of filming it here and doing it together is for the first time. So again, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. Usually it always works out. That's what I've learned lately that it just seems to work. So I think it's just having a positive mindset, following the instructions. Baking is a science, so it's kind of follow the rules, measure things properly, and it should turn out pretty well. So we're going to do this. I've got the Downton Abbey cookbook here. We're going to go through it step by step. One thing that I have done, just because it was a little bit um, tedious and time consuming, one of the first steps is that we have to take two lemons and one orange and we peel the skin off the lemon and orange in little strips and then you juice the orange and put it over the lemon peel and then you juice the lemon and put it over the orange peel and this is supposed to sit for an hour and then we'll come back to this later on and it will all become clear why we're doing that. You may notice that I'm wearing my NF apron I know that when I'm baking, a lot of people do always say, why aren't you wearing an apron? I never usually wear one. I find that it doesn't make a mess when I bake, but I thought that I would wear one today just because it's a bit of a change. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, the first step says, in a bowl, combine the flour, bicarbonate of soda and salt, whisk gently to blend. Okay, so let's do that. Flour salt, which is just a pinch of salt. And the bicarb of soda, which is one and a quarter teaspoons. And whisk it together to combine. Okay, in a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment or in a large bowl with a handheld mixer, cream together the butter and caster sugar on medium speed until smooth and creamy. Okay, we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead over to my stand mixer, so let's do that now. Once you've creamed together the butter and sugar, we're going to add five egg yolks one at a time, beating after each addition. When it's well combined, we're going to start adding in the flour, a tablespoon at a time, followed by a little of the orange juice, alternating between the two until they're both gone. Once you've added them, you're going to beat the dough for 10 minutes. So, yeah, we have to beat this for 10 minutes, which I've never done before when baking a cake. And I have to tell you that I am a little bit concerned about this batter. It seems very gloopy to me, but I did follow the instructions to the tea with the alternating flour and orange juice. 
and it's supposed to be a very, very light, delicate cake. It says here that when the cakes are cooling that you have to um, take them out of the tins very carefully because they're so delicate. I'm not sure how that is going to work. It seems very gloopy, but we'll see. Here it goes, this gloopy, gloopy dough. And we'll see how this turns out. So this is going to bake in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. I'm very anxious to see how it's going to go, but hopefully we can make Mrs. Patmore and Daisy very proud. Okay, so my cakes are baked. I have to say, uh, even though they haven't really risen very much, they're very thin, it is a really gorgeous bake. I can tell the sponge is so moist and delicious. So that is from the result of whipping for quite a long time. Now, what the recipe calls for is marmalade in the middle of the cake. Marmalade, I'm not a huge fan of it. And also because it's such a small cake now, I think I'm gonna layer it up and instead put a cream inside and maybe have a little bit of marmalade on, on in there as well. But I think I prefer cream to just marmalade, which I think can be quite bitter. So I'm gonna make a Chantilly cream um, with a little bit of orange in, which I think will be much nicer. And this cake is also iced on top. So maybe instead of doing the icing, I'll put the cream on top as well. Um, and then what we have to do is we have to, these orange, this orange peel and lemon peel, we have to candy that, which is quite a long process. I've never done it before, but I've read here in the recipe that it takes quite a, a long time. You have to boil it with sugar about three times and then bake it. So that is what we're going to do. And that is it. Should be nice and delicious. I'm pouring double cream into the mixer and to this I will add two tablespoons of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla extract and we're going to beat this until soft and billowy. Okay, so now that our very complex cake is finally finished, it's time to move on to some other things that we're going to have with our Downton Abbey afternoon tea. So I'm moving on to some sandwiches. I've already made these cucumber ones. I've made these a million times before here on my YouTube channel, so I'm not going to go through those again. Um, and I am a little bit conscious of making too many sandwich videos, but you would not believe the amount of messages, emails and comments that I get asking for sandwich recipes. So I thought that I would do some more because as so many people are asking, I really want to uh, satisfy. So this is, um, I'm going to make two new recipes that I've never done before, a chicken one and then a salmon mousse. So hopefully these will be delicious. I think they're quite easy to do. So I'm going to get started on those and then we're almost ready for our Downton Abbey tea party. I'm adding a drizzle of olive oil to a pan and to this I will stir in our diced chicken breast. Once it is cooked, add it to a blender with some creme fraiche, a sprinkling of salt, a squeeze of lemon and a good teaspoon of mustard. Pulse until everything is combined but still quite chunky.
Next I'm making a salmon mousse. To the blender I'm adding cooked smoked salmon, creme fraiche, some salt, a squeeze of lemon and some Italian seasoning and I'm going to pulse until smooth and creamy. So here we have our Downton Abbey inspired tea party. I'm very happy with the way that these recipes have turned out. The cake looks really delicious. Uh, the sandwiches, very fresh. I tasted a bit of the fillings as I was uh, making them and they're really good. The only thing that I would have liked is to properly piped on the salmon mousse onto these crackers, but I couldn't find my piping bag anywhere. So I had to just do them like this, but if you can pipe them on, especially for a Downton Abbey inspired tea, it would look a lot better and a lot more presentable. So it's just the little touches that you can do to make, um, to give a wow factor to your tea. So here on my tea table, we've got teacups and saucers, little plates. I've got a milk jug here. This is the tea strainer to strain the loose leaf tea. I like to put out a selection of tea on my tea table so that people can choose whatever they like. These are a few of my favorites. So we've got two teas here from Fortnum and Mason. This is an Easter tea and I got this as part of a hamper. This smells beautiful. It's like spring in a jar, in a tin. <laughs> Tastes really good. And then we've got the Assam, which is a very rich black tea. And then of course we've got my own Nicholas Fairford tea collection. We've got the Botanica Rose, which I'm drinking now, the Earl Grey Blue, and the breakfast tea if you're just into more simple teas. So yeah, I do always like to put out a little selection of teas for people to choose, and also you can swap them around after each course, which is always a nice thing to do. I've also got my Botanica candle burning here. For a nice afternoon tea like this, it just brings the scent of an English garden into the house. I was wanting to do my tea party outside in the garden, but it's not really the best weather to do that today, so we're going to be indoors where we're safe from the rain. So I thought that I'd give you just my review of the film. For anyone who's a fan of Downton Abbey, you will know that it really is the most uplifting thing to watch. And if you're feeling a little bit low or you just want to escape for a little while, it's probably the best thing that you should go and see. So in that sense, it totally lived up to my expectations. It was two hours of feeling totally happy, uplifted. It is set in part in the south of France, so it's bright, sunshine, beautiful uh, Côte d'Azur landscapes, and it just makes you feel happy and really content. So real Downton vibes that you get from it. And yeah, it was kind of very, you know how Downton Abbey has that really good way of wrapping everything up in a neat little bow so that when you finish the film, everything in the world is right. And that is what happened in this one. Even though there are some sad moments too, it kind of ends in a very nice way, which is good. The only thing that I didn't like about the film is that I'm not gonna give away the plot, but Lady Mary, Lady Mary's husband is not in the film at all. And I just think, it is explained why in the film, but I just think we spent <laughs> six years waiting for Lady Mary to find the one, and then he doesn't even show up in the film. So I think that was a little bit frustrating, but who knows, maybe there's gonna be another film and that will be explained. But from my perception of watching the film, it kind of felt like this could be the end. This is the last one. But who knows? So, before I leave, I just want to give a few updates. A lot of people are asking me about the garden. When am, when am I going to 
release part two of the garden makeover. I am keen to finish the garden, but at the moment it's kind of a waiting game because I've ordered plants, I've ordered furniture and they're yet to arrive. The garden table that I ordered only came yesterday and I ordered that about four weeks ago, so it was very late. These things happen, it's understandable. Um, but yeah, we're waiting for lots of things to be delivered and I want to do it properly so I'm not going to rush. So yeah, the garden makeover is still happening. Thank you for your patience and um, I hope that you're enjoying these little videos in between. So over this weekend, I reached 150,000 subscribers here on YouTube. I just want to thank you all for your support for subscribing, for watching every week, for leaving comments. I can honestly say that I do watch a lot of other YouTubers here and I think that we have one of the best, most beautiful group of people who always comment every week and who enjoy these videos and kind of have become a little community together where we discuss and chat about the videos. And I think it's one of the most rewarding things for me personally to make this content and then see that it's being enjoyed and that it really does bring pleasure to your lives. So thank you for making my dreams come true. I never thought that I would reach this many subscribers on YouTube and um, it is very humbling and I feel really thankful that I'm able to come here and do this every week. So yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode and found it fun and useful. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.